If you hear screaming and gunshots and police cars in the background, don't worry, everything's okay. Steve's just playing Grand Theft Auto. Hey, what's up, you guys? I'm Caitlin from Leaf Me Alone Plants, and today we are trying something a little different. We are going to be making an aquatic terrarium. Is that what it's called? An aquatic terrarium? Is it just an aquarium? In my mind, aquarium has to have fish in it. Is it still an aquarium if there's not fish? I'm not really sure. I know one of you who watches my videos, your name is like Little Rody Aquascapes. Is this an aquascape? Please, somebody, send help. Anyway, basically, today, we are going to be filling up this terrarium with all sorts of aquatic plants and, of course, other substrate and water, too. So, um, if you are either interested in building one of these or if you are kind of just looking for a relaxing video to sit and chill out with, then keep on watching and we are going to get into it right now. it is worth seeing at the beginning of this video. I am in no way a professional aquarium builder, um, a professional aquatic plant landscape builder. This is basically my first time doing this. From what I've heard, the aquarium community is a little harsher and more critical than the uh, houseplant community. So if you are coming onto this video from the aquarium community, please try not to hate too much. This is, again, my first time doing this. When I was doing research for how to do this video, um, I started getting a little bit overwhelmed. I'm not gonna lie. There's like basically two branches of how people do these. There's the people who seem to just buy a plant and put it in a glass jar with water. Um, and then there are the people who are like, you're going to need to have nitrogen injection into your water. And you're going to need air stones. And you're going to need all these chemicals. Um, so we are kind of going to meet somewhere in the middle today of not just having it be water, but uh, when I was buying supplies, I looked at getting like a nitrogen system and they started at $60. So for our first time doing this, to be completely honest with you, I wasn't necessarily prepared to have this be like a multiple hundred dollar investment. So we're going to be doing this in a really simplistic way. And I'll keep you guys updated over time of how this goes and you know what the maintenance looks like. I plan on just doing routine water changes with this. I'm not sure uh, how long this will last for, but yeah. In full transparency, this is not going to be like a super complex system. So yes, now that we've got that out of the air, let's talk a little bit about the plants that we have today. So you may or may not be able to see this guy sitting over here. He is literally out of his uh, pot. I just depotted him a while ago. He has been living in soil and I knocked all the soil off, rinsed it off, and we just have his roots there. So I do wanna get him in water pretty fast because they are just sitting out. I don't have him inside anything. I have grown lucky bamboo like this um, just in water before and have had really good success with it. So I don't foresee too many issues with taking him out of that soil. I know that a ton of people grow these just in water. So yeah, I think that this guy will do completely fine. And I think he's going to add a really nice size contrast in here. It comes way outside of the bowl. So um, yeah, overall, I think he's going to look really cool compared to everything else that we have in here, which is a little bit on the shorter side. Now, while I was out at PetSmart today, which is where I got a bunch of the supplies, I'll put a quick video right here. Oh, hey guys, if this outfit looks familiar, it's because it is. Um, I actually just finished shopping at Lowe's for the $20 houseplant shopping challenge video. Um, I think that's gonna come out before this one, so go check that video out afterwards. But we are now outside PetSmart. I uh, have gotten the tip that this is the place to buy um, aquatic plants. And right now I have the bulbs for the Madagascar lace leaf. I also have the moss ball and um, I have some lucky bamboo, which I know you you can grow aquatically so um we are going to just stop in here and see what else we can get um i think i'm also going to pick up some kind of like fish tank gravel to line the bottom of our jar with so yeah um really excited let's go check out what they have this is so funny look they literally have like beer pond for fish tanks i love this it's, it doesn't fit the vibe of what we're going for but it's super cool okay not the greatest selection here but Let's see what we can to get for ourselves. Also, they have all the fish and I love fish and I always want to have a tank, but I don't feel like I am responsible enough of an adult to have a fish tank. So uh, we're going to save that project for another day. We actually ended up getting this aquatic plant. It is a cardinalis. Um, it's kind of like reddish pinkish. I thought it was really cool looking. Be completely transparent. Again, this is my first time dealing with aquatic plants. so. I don't know much about it. Oh, okay, this is actually an Ultranetheria reniki. Okay, so I am familiar with um, the Chaco Chili, which is actually a terrestrial Ultranetheria. Ultra, 
oh my god, I cannot say this word, ultraantheria. Um, so, okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. We should be able to care for this guy pretty well then. Um, it looks like these are just kind of little clusters. So we'll probably place these guys in here, one of the last plants that we place in there. But yeah, this was the only plant that I got when we were at PetSmart. They did have kind of a limited selection, not just of like house plants, but of actually everything. I'm not sure if because of like COVID or why, but it seemed like they didn't have a lot of things there today. So yeah, this is what we got from there. And then finally, if you watch my video unboxing house plants from Amazon, you may know that I actually got two aquatic plants um, in that video. So we got our Marimo moss balls and then we also got a Madagascar lace leaf ball. Um, now I filmed that video and I literally had to go out of town like right after it. I didn't have anything else like cleaned out at the time to put these in so this is kind of embarrassing. Again, don't judge. Um, I literally had these just sitting in this little whiskey glass uh, while I was away just to have them sitting in something. So uh, they definitely are ready to get out of here. The Madagascar lace leaf bulbs have them rooting up. Definitely have much bigger root systems than when I got them. So really exciting there and uh, yeah, overall I think they are definitely ready for a larger home than what we have them in right now. Now as for this container, I got this a while back um, just thrifting when I was out out in one of my little thrifting journeys. I've literally just had it filled up with soil on my bookshelf for uh, almost a year now. So I'm really glad that we are getting to repurpose this and uh, make it something beautiful again. So as for our substrate today, I just have this premium fish gravel. It's kind of like this white sand. I got it um, again at PetSmart. I believe it was like $5 for this bag and it definitely should be more than enough to fill it up. So yeah, we're just going to start there. Now I had the foresight to get out my terrarium tools, but unfortunately I forgot that I took the scissors out of here, so I will be right back. Okay, we got them. So we are just going to cut the corner of this open so I have a little more control of where we are placing the sand. I feel like this is not the best location to be building a terrarium. We like need to get a terrarium building station for this channel. Okay, so we're gonna start with that, that much and put this aside. Now again, if you are looking for terrarium tools, I got these guys just on Amazon. They work super great and I'm just going to use this one to spread the sand out and kind of get it how we want it. Okay, um, I think I'm going to need a little more just for the sake of burying our roots for um, the lucky bamboo, but I do just want to test this out first. So I also got this today when we were at PetSmart and this is just a piece of driftwood for hardscaping. I think it is going to make this look a little more sophisticated and just overall look cooler. Now, you guys, uh, if you think houseplants are expensive, holy shit. This piece of driftwood was $13, yes, for this little <laughs> lump of wood. So moral of the story is if you live near a beach where they have driftwood, you guys should go pick that stuff up because this is expensive. If you guys don't watch him, I personally love um, Serpa Designs on YouTube. I have watched him forever. I think I've said this before, but unlike my terrariums that are kind of lame, he literally makes like the most incredible terrariums and aquariums and paludariums. Moral of the story, if you don't watch him, definitely go check him out after this. He is literally like the most relaxing person's videos to watch. I think I like that. So now let's figure out placement for this lucky bamboo. It has this red twist tie on there. I think I'm gonna take this off real quick and see what happens. I feel like these are gonna fall apart, but I don't really like the look of that on there. Okay, cool, they're still staying together. So yeah, we're gonna take that off for aesthetic purposes. I don't know why this feels like such a stressful decision to figure out where to place these plants, but yeah, I think we're going to go back here. So let's just dig a little hole for this guy and then we can backfill that in. He is tilted a little forward just so that I don't have to have his roots like right in the center because um, this bowl does curve up, if that makes sense. So yeah, hopefully he doesn't fall over. We'll just have to give him enough gravel back there. I was thinking I'd barely use like any of this, but we're almost like halfway through this bag. So I'm glad that I got a bigger one rather than a smaller one. Cool. This is what we are working with so far. I think it's looking really good. I'm still worried though that this bamboo looks like it's shaking around in there a little bit. So I just want to backfill this just a tiniest bit more. 
Okay, I think that's officially where we're going to leave our bamboo. Now, again, I only know this from watching other people, but um, typically you do like the hardscaping first, which is things like your driftwood and rocks. So um, I had these rocks in this terrarium earlier. I just rinsed them off to get any like debris or minerals off of them. And I'm just gonna kind of play around with placing these in here to add just a little more visual interest to the piece. Now, some people who are building like giant ones, I know they like, little silicone glue down all the hardscape pieces. Um, I am not doing that. One thing I forgot to mention is that if your driftwood is not waterlogged, it will float up to the top. Um, it looks as though this one is already waterlogged, so it should be fine, fingers crossed. Uh, otherwise, maybe we will be silicone gluing things down after all. Okay, and here's how everything looks now that it is hardscaped and all in there. So at this point, I am going to start putting in the rest of our plants. So yeah. Oh yeah, look at them nice roots. I don't think you can see them. There we go. If I hold it up to my hair for contrast, now you can see them. Now, of course, since these Madagascar leaf leaves, blah, blah, Madagascar, Madagascar lace leaves, say that 10 times in a row. Since these um, don't have like the leaves coming out of the bulbs yet, obviously um, we won't be able to get the final idea of how this will look as time goes on. But um, again, it's not like I'm going anywhere. So I will give you guys periodic updates on how this kind of just evolves over time and how it looks. Placing those bulbs was actually harder than I anticipated. I'm like having flashbacks to our gumball machine terrarium experience, but um, hopefully they stick down in there. They're pretty good in that soil, so I think they should be good. Next up is our Marima moss ball. Now this guy is a floating moss ball, so I'm gonna place his anchor, I think kind of in this corner over here, and we won't really know how it's gonna look until I fill it up, but um, I think that's gonna be a good placement for it. Okay, we'll just plop him down in there for now. He, I'm not gonna lie, he does look kind of cute up front, so I might even end up getting um, not a floating moss ball, just like one that plops down to the bottom, because yeah, he looks kind of cute right now. Finally, we have our cardinalis, so let's get him popped open. Um, I think he has like those little water beads down at the bottom of him, so depending on how much of that is in there, we may or may not have to um, clean him off first. Oh, and if you guys are wondering like how much aquatic plants cost in comparison to um, just regular house plants, this guy was $10, but he was kind of on the expensive side. Ooh, this is so gross. These so little water beads, it's literally like jello on here. Should have brought a paper towel over here. Okay, I just wanted to show you him real quick before we pop him in there. Look at how beautiful this plant is. I'm actually obsessed with this and I hope it grows gigantic because I want more of these. Because I love him so much, we are actually going to place him right front and center up here. And even though we have those nice <laughs> terrarium tools, sometimes I think it is just easier to go in with your hands. And I think we are just going to put a little more of this gravel right up front here to hold him in place. So you guys, I'm not gonna lie, I am loving the way that this looks. But the real test is to get it filled up with water. Now I filled this up ahead of time and ran the water through my Brita and let it just sit out to dechlorinate for a couple days. You can either do that or if you don't wanna do that, then you can buy like distilled water or um, RO water at the store. Uh, but yeah, that's just what I'm using. So let's get this guy filled up. One more thing to note is when you're filling it up, try to put it in there slowly. I'm actually going to run it down the side of this tool really slowly so as to not disturb the gravel and make it super murky. Um, we may have to do a water change right away because a lot of what's in here is fresh supplies for the first time so that gravel may be a little dirty, um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And here is the final product. Now again, this is my first time making one of these, but Overall, for a first shot at building one of these, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think the colors look beautiful together. I love the contrast of the white sand versus the pink versus the green. So yeah, overall, I thought it turned out pretty cool and I definitely think I'm gonna continue to try doing some of these again in the future because it was a lot of fun to build and it's definitely a cool, unique way to display plants. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and if you are not already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content like this in the future. Well, typically, it's not content like this, but similar to this, uh, plant related stuff in general. So thank you guys so much for sticking around until the end, and I hope to see you in the next video.